uh, for coming and attending this uh, evening lecture series organized by the Beijing Mental Association. Uh, the term evening lecture series uh, was derived uh, a few years ago and uh, it's become a very popular uh, title to put it as uh, uh, a sort of as education where after office hours you know, we have the time and you can still learn and go. And uh, with this uh, CPD program that we have arranged, uh, uh, it is meant to reach the members and uh, to have a more interactive sessions. And I know many of you have attended lots of conferences where we have about 500 to 1,500 delegates attending, and it's very difficult for us to interact. Uh, we have another doctor today, uh, Dr. Chow Kai Fu, who will be speaking to you. Feel free to stop him at any time. Right? And I told him that if nobody asks any questions today, that means something is wrong with your presentation today. So as such, feel free, yeah? And uh, he's uh, very ready to answer all the queries. And uh, this is the, the whole reason is we would like to get closer to you, understand uh, what are the needs and the uh, doubts and all that, so that uh, we can break the ice during a small uh, sessions like this today. Uh, before I proceed uh, to introduce the uh, speaker of the day, Dr. Uh, Chow Kai Fu, uh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm, the, I'm Dr. Haja Madhudin, uh, the president elect of MDA, as well as the co chairman of the CPD, uh, CPD committee of MDA. Uh, the next event, uh, big, a big uh, event in the MDA calendar, will be the uh, CDA, Commonwealth Dental Association, slash Malaysian Dental Association, slash FDI. Sunday Convention, which will be held in Kuchin, Sarawak. That will be from the 24th to 28th. Uh, and our annual AGM will not be held in Peninsula Malaysia this time, it will be held in Kuchin, Sarawak. So there will be a time where we locate the AGM or the main event to different uh, geographical uh, <coughs> places of, of Malaysia. Uh, the last time I remember we had uh, the AGM in Sabah. And after many years, uh, it is, uh, Kuching is going to play host uh, to host the next uh, 69th MD AGM. I would encourage all of you to attend. And I think the promotion team have done very well to entice you with lots of uh, discounts and freebies and all that. Uh, so uh, believe me, uh, the MDA does not try to make any money from the registration that we charge for the conventions. The trade. Uh, the income from the trade uh, partners is good enough to, to support uh, the dental traders and all that. So basically, uh, most of the talks, are, I mean, the, the registration is always subsidized, as we say. So as such, please uh, uh, don't think that we are charging you a lot and all that. It's a very, very minimal uh, registration fee that we have deemed. And uh, the hotels, uh, let me just, some few, I had some questions outside, how is uh, coaching and uh, why is it a different menu, hotels are different menu. Uh, let me just draw you a scenario. You remember Putrajaya International Convention Center, <coughs> okay? It is a huge convention center, but it is not supported by hotels. The main reason why we need to have such kind of convention center is to accommodate huge crowd, to accommodate huge trade exhibition space. We have been having a fantastic convention center as KLCC, but uh, to the region of Sabah, Sarawak, they have one new convention center. So it's a brand new convention center, very big, very spacious. So, but that is had to be built out of Kuching. It is a 20 minute drive out of Kuching town. And uh, we have arranged uh, various shuttles for you. you know, as long as you're an MDA member, you're entitled to go hop on to those shuttles to the uh, convention center. So we are doing as uh, anything possible just to make your stay in Kuching uh, very easy. Uh, I'm sure you have received uh, these flyers by now. The second announcement is out, so please make use of it and uh, please register yourself early. So the signing program happens to be a very good uh, signing program. We have about 26 speakers there with all the disciplines. Uh, I'm sure if you are hung if you're hunger for knowledge, I think uh, CPD, CDA Kuching will be the next venue, yeah? So, with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce our uh, speaker for this evening, uh, Dr. Chow Kai Fu. He is quite, he got his BDS graduate uh, from the University of Singapore. He's also the fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons England. 
He has done a certificate of oral implantology from Frankfurt University of Germany, and uh, he is a member of uh, fellow of International College of Medicine or of ICD, and uh, the, as, uh, also the member of the Academy of Medicine Malaysia. I was told just now that he is also uh, one of the specialists registered with the NSR National Specialist Register. Uh, Malaysia has come up with a register whereby all specialists have a separate register to attend. Though we have our NDC registration, they have an NSR number. So Dr. Chow is one of those uh, few specialists who have registered on the NSR. Uh, Dr. Chow has been quite active with MBA and uh, he is the former chairman of the uh, MBA PCBC committee or the patients or the patients complaints uh, bureau committee. And he's also the former deputy of the MBA committee of government policy and regulation. And uh, he's also a member of the National Oral Health Research Initiative. He was, as you know, many of you might know, he was active as the, in the Malaysian Oral Implant Association. He's currently the advisor and the immediate uh, past president of uh, MORD. Currently, his position is the Honorary General Secretary of the Malaysian Oral Association. And uh, he's in private practice, and his practice is called Zao Specialist Dental and Implant Clinic. With that, uh, allow me to present to you Dr. Chow, who's going to talk on oral implant, what do you call it, minimized dental implants and their uses. Okay, with that, I hope you are Dr. Haja, for your very kind introduction. We, we are going to have a very exciting night tonight. And, uh, you're going to hear stuff that might blow your mind a bit. And I hope that by the time you walk out of this room, you'll be convinced that we are on the verge of a revolution in dentistry. <laughs> you don't seem to believe me, but let's see. Huh? Mini dental implant placement. This is actually a video, but I don't think we have time to go through it. This is Professor Bronmark. <clears throat> When he was first propounding dental implants, nobody believed him, especially his own countrymen. And they used to shout him down at meetings and tell him to get lost. So uh, he's uh, pretty uptight, you can see, but he was right. And we need to thank him for changing the whole way we are doing dentistry today. Of course, there are other claims to it, but he was the one the first one who did a 16-year study. And when he gave his talk in Toronto in 1982, at the end of it, he was trembling whether they would kick him out of the meeting or not. But they gave him a standing ovation, and from that year onwards, everyone copied his implant. Now, minimize dental implants and their uses, all right? Now, this is a bit uh, out of focus, but don't worry. This is what we used to do in the past, okay? We pick big operation, make big hole in the... We put big implants, stitch it up. Okay, there's... Uh, you can see there's not enough bone, so... Uh, we open up and put the implant and put in a big bone graft. And of course, half the bone graft disappeared, and, but nevertheless, we managed to put on the tooth there. Alright? And then, uh, there's a uh, final... Out. Uh, these are the different root form implants in the past. You can see it has a very checkered history, oral implants. And uh, currently, these are called uh, minimized dental implants from different mix all over the world. Uh, this is uh, dentium, this is the uh, MOS D, this is uh, intralock, and this is uh, intact. And, but you can see that uh, because the mouth is so small, somehow in the end they end up about the same shape and the same design for various reasons. Okay, this is a case where you can see the patient has lost quite a lot of teeth. And this is his mother's. And we put in uh, big implants at the back. He was 78 years old when he saw me and uh, I looked at him and he had no bone in front and I thought, shall I go and put a bone graft? Hey, welcome Thomas. Hey. Welcome. Shall I put a bone graft there and uh, collect a lot of money from him because 
he say, when he step into my clinic, he say, don't talk to me about money. Just give me back my teeth so I can eat the steak. Okay? So I, I had a great struggle with my conscience and say, okay, if this is my father, what do I do? So I put in four mini implants and charge him a third of the price. And this is the result. And this is about four years ago. I put it in and this is a recent picture and it's still in his mouth, he's still enjoying his steaks. And uh, you can see the nice teeth are the Im implants. The not so nice teeth are his own teeth. Uh. Uh, we do teeth in an hour. Okay, this is uh, a mini implant. And then, uh, right. uh, recently, this was done about four or five years ago. Uh, recently, I saw the patient again. She came all the way from Penang to see me. Unfortunately, the implant did not fail, but all his uh, her other teeth underwent uh, periodontal problems and it was loose and all shape. But the implant was there and it was the strongest tooth there. So we can actually do a uh, tooth in an hour. Unfortunately, this patient uh, couldn't follow up and help her with a periodontal problem. <coughs> okay, this is another patient, only one tooth left. We are heavy denture up there and very loose denture down here. So we put in four mini implants. Four mini implants. Down. So we climb on the lower denture to be removable. And that very night the patient was eating happily. No more loose denture. One of the most difficult problems in dentistry is a loose lower food denture. My friends, today we can solve it before many implants in two hours. The other major problem in dentistry during my student days is nobody can solve free and saddles satisfactorily. My friends, with implants, free and saddles are not a problem anymore. Immediate loading of narrow diameter implants with over dentures in severely atrophic mandibles. So this was a study done by uh, Sang Chong Cho and all that. And then, of course, Dennis Tanao, one of the big names in the plant world. And he says that you can put four mini implants in your lower jaw and fix the dentures. It's got the 96% success rate. You can go to the study and read it for yourself, okay? Loose upper full dentures, what do we do? I don't believe we can put four because the upper teeth, uh, bone is softer. Alright, so I put six. Since the patient won't pay for fixed implants, I mean implant uh, supported prosthesis, so we put in six and clip on the denture there. But uh, look at how healthy the gums are around the mini implant. Very healthy. Hardly any inflammation. Hardly any. And this was a picture not taken at that time. It was, this was a picture taken about three years later. It's still like that. And we use special buds made in Malaysia, which we don't have to add shims to them. And we just clip it to the denture, and then the patient puts it on and off. And when the old ring wears off, we gave the patient a special instrument with some orthodontic O-rings, <coughs> which he can get very commonly, very cheap, and they can change the O-ring for themselves. All right? And this is the final result. Huh? So loose lower full dentures, loose upper full dentures, my friend, are not a problem anymore today. Transitional prosthesis snap on and snap off. So uh, we also use uh, mini implants to snap on and snap on transitional prosthesis because sometimes, uh, because I want to make more money, I put in big implants so that I can charge double for the price. Because I put in a mini implant, I charge one third. Now that's a joke, okay? That's a joke. Because in this case, I have to put in a sinus leaf, so I put big implants. But then after that, the patient say, hey, I know teeth. 
So I caught the body, then I put in uh, some mini implants there, and I put in an O-ring and a butt there, and fix on to a temporary bridge, acrylic bridge, and snap it on. Now when we were doing the, when we were doing the actual uh, regular implant, it was a big operation because we did a sinus lead. And when we step on, there was a sutures there, there was a, you know, there was a lot of bleeding. And what you see now is about a month later. For one month, the patient did not remove it because it was snapped on. Snapped on with that. I just told the patient to brush it, rinse your mouth with crawl exceeding mouth wash every day. And uh, one month later, I remove it and this is the result. So the gums are healed nicely. And what is wonderful about it is that the patient has a temporary prosthesis which I snap on and when the patient comes back for a review, I snap it off, look at it, hey, very good, I removed the sutures, uh, it's healing very well, sir. I snap it back and say, okay, I'll see you in a month's time and you'll connect the button. That's all you need to do. We don't need to uh, fix any temporary cement and all that. That's how wonderful a mini implant is. And when we have fixed it, we just unscrew it. At about 80 MCM, you unscrew it, it will come up. So for snap-on and snap-off, temporary prosthesis, and of course the instant dental implant, in this case, the patient have an infected <coughs> tooth. We remove the tooth and stick on the implant straight away. I have this interesting uh, write-up in my website where I say bone climbing up the tongue, which a lot of uh, dentists all over the world have an issue with me. They keep telling me you can't say that. But I, I say, well, it's just a matter of talking. Okay, I don't really mean it scientifically, but it's just a matter of uh, actually it seems to be. Okay? So we extracted the tooth, and uh, we straight away screw in the implant. Now, I would never dare to do it, this sort of thing if not for my good friend Dr. Koi and Dr. Philip Ting who are veterans. <laughs> and uh, they told me they did it. You know? So I say, how can you do such a thing? Because I'm supposed to be a trained in oral surgery. You see? Well, how can you do such a thing? I say. But then they say, do you know that one month later or two months later, Hey, doc, your bridge is failing. You uh, get quite uh, quite upset about it. So this patient uh, had a bridge. Wasn't my patient, okay? So, so when by the time she came to see me, you can see that this bridge is totally loose. She can only bite a bit on this side, this side. What do you think of this patient? You have a horrible time eating, right? Not only that, she actually is the chairman of a public listed company. Imagine how she going to conduct meetings. So she walked into my clinic recommended by my eldest brother, who told me you better do something. You know? My eldest brother has foisted this problem on me and I got to do something if not or else, you know, you know. He is actually the eldest and the youngest. You know. <laughs> so my God, what am I going to do? So well, luckily I have some mini implants. So I put some mini implants there and fix it temporarily. After two hours the patient walked out and the bridge was no more moving and she could conduct her meetings. Then later on she came back, we put all the big implants. Uh, that's why where I can charge her. <laughs> <laughs> but I could do that because temporarily she she was encouraged that after two hours she can walk out of the clinic. A loose bridge and now you have a fixed bridge and she can smile and at least bite a 
at least when she green and scold all her people at the board meeting, she don't have to hold back. So later on, after I put all these large implants back and collected some money, uh, she said, what are you going to do about the front? I said, the front is still quite stable. Well, she said, you know, the foot trap and all that, which was true. You know, but it wasn't, it, the bridge was not done by me, so. Okay, so this is what we did. Okay, we put in some more mini implants because she has the bone height but did not have the bone breadth. It was very narrow reach. And if I was going to uh, spend time doing bone grafts, which I can, it would take about six months. And then bone grafts are quite unpredictable in this part of the mouth. But I know that bone enough mini implants is quite predictable. Welcome, Marcel. Thank you. Okay. Quite predictable. So I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One implant for one tooth, okay? So uh, so she walked off happily. And I told her to come back every six months. You know, you must come back every six months, you must maintain it just like your car, you know, it feels it's not my car. And I haven't seen her for two years. <laughs> but I'm quite sure it's still there because she knows where to find me. In fact, after that, she brought her husband to see me and did some more implants. Okay, ectodermal dysplasia, I mean, is the best bet. So I have this ongoing debate over the net, a global debate, you know, where they all <coughs> about this, which I was showing just now. The challenge patient, ectodermal dysplasia. So when this patient was introduced by one of my other patients, I sat down, I wrote a letter and sent him to university <laughs> because I never treated such a patient before I think the university is the best bet and this guy can't pay me any money aren't university is supposed to treat all this so I sent him to the university but three months later he came back and said hey they haven't done anything yet can you please treat me and he, he came all the way from Kelantan so I said, you came all the way from Kelantan to see me, well, then, okay, I'll try my best. So this is what we did, this is, alright. So we went through the uh, cephalometric analysis. You can see that uh, the, the mouth is overclosed, that's why she, uh, his kiss her, you know. <coughs> when she, he stands in front of you, uh, his lips are very full, as if he wants to kiss you. And then, uh, he's an overclosed bite. And then, because uh, he never did have teeth here, so the lower anterior segment is mm -hmm. sort of collapsed back. Right. So what do you do? So I woke up a treatment plan, and I said, well, I'll try my best, and my best for me, okay? So I thought about it, then I, this her, his kisser. <coughs> so I use a wax and try to gauge how high I should make the bite because from the several gram you can see that it was over close. So uh, after that I got him close his mouth, so the kisser looks a bit more presentable. So I treated some of the teeth. Every tooth he has is irreplaceable because there's nothing else. So even the primary tooth, but in walk, I did root canal for him. And then I put over crowns <coughs> to raise the bike. <coughs> what do we do with the Dracula teeth? Now, I <coughs> Okay, we uh, do cosmetic volume, all right? And then we put in cotodontic brackets and start straightening. <coughs> I don't think uh, orthodontics uh, 
you, I, I believe you can learn. You can you should all learn everything you can. Okay, so uh, we approximated the T. Ah, okay. Then we tie it up. So what we do with this space here? There's no obiella bone there, it's so narrow. What do we do? What do we do it down here? You know, it's a collapsed and zero segment. Okay. We put mini implants. Because you can't put a regular. We can. But if I put a bone graft, put a regular, I will charge him 8,000 rupees. <laughs> so I put this mini implants in and gave him back his teeth in an hour. Then the lower segment, we uh, we have this special appliance to push it forward. Ah, then you see, to slowly push the anterior segment forward. All right, and also mesialize the two primary canines, actually they are primary canines. <laughs> but here is a case where if you do not know how to use mini implants, what are you going to do? Okay. You are going to charge the patient a lot of money and going to put him through the trauma. But you could solve it. If you know how to use mini implants, you could solve it. Okay? So I believe uh, Everything we have, we should use to the full. And this is a liner mercy. Okay. I like him because he's a small little guy, but he runs through all the big giants and scores goals. Only recently, a few days, he just scored four goals. You know, running through all these giants. And I believe the mini implant is something like that. It's underestimated and have a bad press. But like all things, we should know how to use it. And you will be useful. Okay, what do we do on the lower? This is a temporary bridge. So this is how we complete the case. Then we make a permanent porcelain bridge on it. And this is uh, about the end of treatment now. Now, one of the most valuable payments I had recently was when I finished at this point and the patient stepped down from the chair and said, Doc, thank you. That thank you was worth a lot of money. That thank you. It was very satisfying. And uh, in a sense, uh, it's because we can use mini implants, that's why we finish this case within the capacity of this patient. And I would conjecture to say that this, for the treatment of this sort of case, is the treatment of choice. It's not an option, it's the treatment of choice. I would stand here and argue with the best implants dentist in the world. And you tell me to put a big implant there, I'm telling you why not giving the patient the best. Mini implant in this case is a treatment of choice. This is another one, a congenital missing laterus. And this final result. A later view. Single missing tooth. It's very narrow reach there. So we put in a mini implant. We can floss right underneath and this is the final result. Okay? Free and seven. We put two mini implants there. Alright? <coughs> this is a special instrument we, in which we made to introduce a special button on top of the mini implant as the button. I name it after my wife. <laughs> it's a little like a rack horn. I'm not saying my wife is <laughs> You came down close, dog. <laughs> <laughs>
And uh, <laughs> I have to confess that I use LGNet impression for this crown and bridge. Alright? And I think it's, it's a treatment of choice. Because I have a stinking feeling that the manufacturers have been selling a silicone and rubber base at a high price. And I think that a lot of it is actually unnecessary because by the time we fit in the bridge and grind it down, there's a lot of space between the crown, the prepared crown and the bridge, and we fill it full of cement. Now with an implant that is not a living thing, I think the alginate impression is real. I stand to be corrected and challenged. Uh, Dr. Hadja just now told me say that you, you should always be ready to stop me and challenge me, uh, so don't feel shy, alright? So this is a free hand center, alright? Major problems in dentistry, rotten teeth, conservative dentistry, painful teeth, endodontics, crooked teeth, orthodontics, loose teeth, periodontics, we have it all soft, alright? Missing teeth, prosthodontics, we are dentures, bridges, or implants. So, uh, Dentists are actually very clever to do everything. Okay. Only 10% of dentists, however, only 10% of dentists will implants because uh, everyone thinks it's too difficult and too costly. All right? The question I want to raise actually is actually is it true? <coughs> or is it because it is a myth? that has been propagated since the time of Professor Bronmark. Because when he first came out with, with his implants, he refused to sell to anyone unless he go all the way to Sweden and sit in his classes for a week, or I think two weeks. And after that, they got a certificate, then they had the right to buy the implant. Is it true that it's too difficult and too costly? Is it true? The general dentist, hi, Dr. Verdaus, welcome. This is my mentor. Hey, okay. <laughs> General dentist dilemma today is inform the patient and lose the patient. Because you see a space there. In the past, we all implant, you say, ah, I will need to cut a bridge, sir, or madam, and it will cost you so much. Now, you can't do that because if the patient finds out they can put implant, you can just sue, and you might lose the suit. <laughs> And you don't inform the patient, you have a bad conscience. You cut the bridge and then day and night you're wondering if something goes wrong with my patient, sue me. <laughs> well, the third thing you can do is to learn implant dentistry, but it's too difficult and too expensive for the patient. Okay. The implants have been roadblock. You are suffering a bottleneck, constipation. The promise of implants when Professor Bronma first propagated it, has not reached its full potential today. 90% of the people who are waiting for it, but they can't get it because most of us are not trained and we tell them it's too expensive. Because it's difficult to learn and place, it's painful to the mouth and pocket, what, what if it is easy to learn and do and painless to the mouth and pocket? What if? Can't be true, okay, can't be true. But if it is, then you and I are going to do a great time as dentists. Okay? We have patients lining up. Now, a bridge. What do you do? You have to cut the real tooth, you know. You remove the enamel. GB Black's conservation of sound tooth structure goes out the window. Right. Remove the enamel. Not only enamel, we remove the dentine. Yeah. If we hit the pump, sorry lah, <laughs> we do not ruin canal. Okay? And then the next two, we do the same. And then after that, we take a silicone or rubber based impression. And then we cast it carefully and then send to the lab. After that, we cement it. After 10 years, 30% failed. That's statistically true. And actually, we, we do a lot of damage, isn't it? Don't you think so? Cut this two, cut this two. Bridge 
versus implant. A bridge actually is more destructive, more risk involved because you cut the enamel, you cut the dentin, you risk the pulp. And let me tell you, even if you don't touch the pulp, don't think the pulp is not is not touched. It's already injured. They have done histological studies. They cut the primola tube that they, they are going to extract for orthodontic reasons. They trim it and then put it and then under histological studies it is already undergone inflammation. They recover. But sometimes ten years down the road it dies. Alright? Very destructive, very risky. It's not renewable. Aslan Green Party, you know, we got to have renewable resources. And we are cutting down uh, our trees, I mean our teeth. Non-renewable. In order to plant one more artificial tree or tooth. Yeah. Now implant is less destruction. What do we destroy in an implant? What? We take out some bone. If the implant fails, you take out the implant, what happens to the bone? It regenerates. If your tooth fails and you take out the tooth, what happens to the tooth? It's gone forever. Which is more less destructive? Which is more destructive? It's a crown and bridge. Which is more risky? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to walk out to the room tonight after this talk raring to do in plants because it's easy and it is affordable. And it's less risky than crown and bridge. And it's renewable. So what if implant fail? After 10 years, 10% 10 of implants fail. It's a fact. It's better than crown and bridge actually. So what if an implant fail? You remove it and put in another one. What have you lost? Make sure that before you do the implant, you make your patient sign consent, inform consent that there is a small risk of failure. So that when it does fail, you say, see, I'm sorry, you know, uh, it failed, but you see. But most of the time, it doesn't fail, let me tell you. Implant dentistry is actually easy and safe compared to cutting bridges. And many implants, even more so. Implant dentistry is easy to learn. Malaysian Oral Implant Association, come and join us. Huh? <coughs> huh? Our vice president is there, I'm the vice of this term. Malaysian Oral Implant Association. It's easy to learn and affordable to the patient. Now what I'm saying is totally <coughs> against what everything is saying, but you just saw the logic of it. What do you think? Do you, you know? I believe it's easy to learn and affordable to the patient and less risky and less destructive. So uh, I'm personally using the body system, making implant. I, I want to make implant dentistry a common practice in all dental clinics. All right? Uh, this is the body system at work. This is actually a mini implant system. But I work out a system by which I complete a mini implant in a fast, safe, and easy manner. Because one of the perennial problems of mini implants, which is a fair charge, is that there's a lot of food threat. But actually the problem is solved. It's just a matter of common sense. So this is a mini implant. And then this is the raptor holding the butt and then we clamp it down there and cement it on. And once you cement it on, the wonderful thing is that you can see all the cement all oozing out around here. And you can eyeball it and clean it thoroughly. Something you can never do with a regular implant. I asked a few implant dentists in different international conventions and asked them, when you have an emergence profile and then the crown abutment margin is hidden in the nice sulcus there, what do you do with the excess? How can you be sure, very very sure that nothing is left behind? 
when you cement in the crowd. All of them, your exception, say they are not sure, they just try their best. But with a mini implant, you can be sure. You remove everything and then you take the impression and you can even take x-ray, you can see there's no more cement left. And then you take the impression, alginate impression. After that, you cement in your crown, you can floss it. This is a zoom in, okay? See the nice, sexy there? Sexy look there? You can actually go in here and force it right to the implant. And this is final result. We did it in two weeks. We did it in two weeks, okay? Now I do big implants. If the patient insists, I do and I collect the money. But I always give my patient options now, okay? You cannot do that with uh, big implants. Sometimes you can if the bone is hard enough, but most of the time you play safe. Because a big implant means a big hole in the bone, longer healing time. You need to wait. Now, I'm going to just do something unusual at this point. We are going straight into the net and go live. This is uh, Osteo News, is one of the largest. Uh, implant discussion groups in the world and recently they have this uh, problem extraction defects what remedial treatment would you recommend and then they show this case January to, uh, no this is the, where the patient but this is a recent posting where they raise up now mm -hmm. this case you can see six nice teeth there so what did they do they extracted it all and they put it, they tried to do what is called an all on six. Nowadays you hear all on four and all on six. So they tried to do an all on six. So they told the patient, yeah, this is the way to do it, you know, we remove all your teeth, we put six implants there and we we'll give you all your upper teeth back. So, but after some time it became all on three. <laughs> and very dangerous because they all lost the bone and it's going to be all on none soon. <coughs> and so they post this case there and show the horrendous loss of bone after they remove the implant and ask for solutions. So 20 responses, so we get a we got someone from Alex Sadiago. I, I like this discussion group because you get that this from all over the world everywhere and they'll come in. Uh, what you see are those people who are brave enough to say something. But there are at least uh, probably, for every fellow who says something, there are probably 20 to 50 people who never say anything. So there are a lot of people looking at this, you know. Right now there are people looking at this. So this guy uh, say, uh, gave such and such a advice and then uh, thanks for advice and then Richard Hughes such and such, and then thank you for your input. Leah say sometimes they don't want to give their full name. So in my opinion, etc. etc. And then Richard Hughes, he likes to say about <laughs> the John Manuel DDS. Okay. He said this is a high god gone here case. I don't know what it means. <laughs> the massive forces, etc. etc. And, uh, and then he explained further, and then Richard Hughes, David Sanchez. Sounds like a Mexican. Then, uh, then the Baker Wincy is a well known oral surgeon in the States. Uh, when you say anything, you better be careful of him because he will whack you. Because he's a very learned guy. You say some nonsense, he will whack you. And you. <laughs> so that everyone sees him in there, they're always talking very carefully around him. So he says that. Uh, Psychomatic implants is not a good candidate. Uh, finally, say good luck. <laughs> <laughs> then Dr. Bob says, and then this is me. La. So uh, I, the Malaysian, Malaysian, <laughs> other than American and European. Uh, so a Malaysian came in. Uh, so I uh, started the case. I say, frankly, this is a horrendous disaster. Six good teeth extracted to do an all on six and ended up all on none, etc., etc. And then say, well, uh, actually, I have. 
a similar case and this is how I solved it. So all you need to do is click my name and uh, it goes to straight to my website. And straight to the case that I want, the similar case that I want to show them and see how Malaysians solve the problem. So uh, I, I do have a lot of visitors, you can see, yeah, like thousands of them. Every day there are a lot of people coming to look at all my cases. You are welcome to go, it's free. Okay? You just, uh, you just Google my name and you can go in. Huh? No, no need password, okay? <laughs> the rescue of a dental cripple and a life transform. So, uh, so I gave, uh, so I use a buddy system in this case. Actually, it's just a mini implant system, all right? Uh, that I invented. And then, uh, this is my patient, which is quite similar. I lost all the teeth, uh, hardly any bone up here. The, you have to do sinus lift here. And that is a horrendous situation. That's all the teeth he has left. So these two teeth were uh, properly involved, so I did root canal save them. And then I made him a nice, beautiful de upper full denture. Then I put in mini implants down there. Why did I do use mini implants? Because the ridge was so narrow. And he wasn't he didn't want any bone plant. I gave him the option. Actually he is a very wealthy man. But I gave him the option and said, <coughs> I think I'll go with mini implants, I don't want bone plants. So I say, well, sign here, you know. Uh, you wanted it, huh? okay? So I put in mini implants and then uh, cement around the bus can be eyeball and thoroughly removed. Pick taken a week or so later shows very healthy mucosa all around the bus the butts and abutments. Okay, very healthy. And uh, then we put in the teeth. And this is uh, actually this is a denture he was wearing in between. And these are the. We put in cleaning grooves in between so that the patient. We can actually remove all the excess cement there. And then is the final result. And then, okay, we restore all his lower teeth. So what do we do for the upper teeth? We take a direct impression. I, I did away with all the analogs, etc., etc. Et I just try to keep it simple, like right? What Steve Jobs said. All you need is one button. <laughs> So I, I like it, you know, keep it simple. Take a direct impression. So I design my system so that just take a direct impression with like LG name. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, hydrophilic. You don't have to have any problem with it going into all the crevices. Cast it, send to the lab, they come back and then uh, here we have uh, we put in minis, minis, minis. So I'm ready for all the brickbacks now. Challenge me. Okay. Put in all the minis. And then... The guy is still smoking. Biting very well, thank you. And you see the gums are very healthy before we cement in the implants. This is a system designed to protect the emergent margin of the implant, which is actually the Achilles heel of all dental implants. Every implant that you ever place, ever in the history of mankind, has a periodontal problem. It's a totally different from the periodontal sulcus of a normal tooth. So we protect that, and uh, this is very healthy gums. And then this is it's a, what is called a roundhouse bridge. No, roundhouse. <laughs> and then uh, this is the final result. Uh, okay. Picture taken more than a year after we cemented. Okay. So the patient is still mucking around, smoking, eating everything he wants. Every time he comes and see me, every six months or so, I tell him, be careful, I don't want to. <laughs> but he's, he says, so far, no problem, you know. So this is it. Okay, these are the implants. So I make sure I didn't penetrate the sinus. 
though uh, very often you will penetrate the sinus so far, it doesn't seem to give too much problems. Okay. If implant dentistry is this simple and safe, then it should be taught at undergrad level and all general dentists should avail themselves to learn. It should not be confined to only some specialists and a few adventurous GPs. Currently, only the rich and the brave are benefiting. Let us democratize implant dentistry and benefit the average and the not so brave that means the rest of the world. What do you say, Dr. Pudals? Yeah? Yeah, here. Yeah. Let's democratize. Come on. If you are not a specialist, actually it's easier to do an implant than cut a bridge and it's safer and less risky. It's a paradigm shift. That's right. Let's go to another case. Now this is another discussion where Please feel free to cut in and ask a huh? question. Okay, this is a uh, trophic maxillary anterior ridge. Ah, this is a question poster. One of the most difficult challenges is the management of the atrophic. Let me enlarge it. Huh? It's the management of the atrophic or deficient maxillary anterior ridge. One of the most difficult challenges in implant dentistry. And the reason is that it's very difficult to graph that part. There are various reasons. One of the main reasons could be because the blood supply is not that good there. Alright? The atrophic deficient maxillary anterior ridge. So, the, the question is posed, uh, what are your favorite techniques for management of bone augmentation and implant installation? Okay. So they want the world to contribute and give their ideas. So the 24 responses, John Manuel chip in and say, well, you need to open and do a big graft. And then uh, Dr. Byrne, yeah, John, man, he agrees with him. Uh, you have to do temporization with uh, four months. The flow cannot have potential, or else you will spoil the bone graft. Uh, thank you, Dr. Manuel, for sharing his wealth of experience and knowledge. Uh, okay, it's so true about GBR, guided bone regeneration. Uh, then you need to connective tissue graft. Okay, now you tell that to the patient, and uh, you walk out. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we shouldn't use all these words, you know. We say, it's easy, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, on and on, and then, uh, and then, ah, this is a top oral surgeon in the States. In my opinion, this is where nothing but autogenous bone can be used. And autogenous bone means they take the bone from your own body. This is a gold standard, autogenous bone. Okay. It's a gold standard. In my hands, it's a top oral surgeon. Eh? Cranium, chin, buckle aspect of the ramus, rigidly secured with cancerous bone, etc. Et Unfortunately, it's hard to do with all the vertical release. I'm not sure what it means. You know? Several teeth over, etc. Prepare, be prepared to lose 30% of your graft. It's a top oral surgeon from the States. Eh? You can go and visit his website. Okay? So you must over graft. Because you are going to lose 30%, graph 130%. But if you graph 130%, you are going to have a lot of problem primary closure <laughs> and blood supply. I perforate both block and recipient side, that means he probably take the bone from the hip or from the tibia or from here. You know, it's major surgery, okay? Come back in six months, okay? Etc. And then on, uh, Dr. Vinci, thanks for pointing out the high risk, demanding nature of large bone. Sorry, John, and all that. Uh, so, yeah. uh, here comes a Malaysian. <laughs> okay. 
So I said I have a 78 year old patient who wonder all his missing teeth replaced, etc. etc. Anterior atrophic maxillary reed. And this is what I do. Okay. Uh, maybe you all like to have a look and see. It may be helpful. So back to my website. Because somebody challenged me and said, why you use mini implants, you must be uh, gaining something for yourself. So I said, yes, I have something to gain besides the patient's best interest. I say so that I explain to them what I gain besides the patient's best interest. You see? So this uh, case, I think I, I talked about this earlier, 78 year old, I put in mini implants instead of big implants, and three years later it's still standing there. And uh, I said that I charge him one third the price. I decided that if he is my father, that's what I would have done. The best option at his age and lack of bone in the tree area were minis. But I will make less dough, hang the profits yet tough. Besides gaining the patient's best interest, I gain a sense of satisfaction and a good conscience. The last picture was taken recently at 82. Yes, I did gain more than the patient's best interest. I could have earned much more because this patient never complained about the price. You know, he paid me whatever I asked. He never talked to me about the price. He just called up his secretary. You say, call my secretary. Your secretary sends a check. That's all. He never talks to me about money. Have so I tell his, him. Sorry. sorry. Have you got his phone number? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you after. <laughs> so uh, okay. So three years. Then I was challenged, you know, by this. So he scolded me you know, uh, over the net. He said, rah, rah, rah. And then I said, okay, uh, if that's what you think, let me show you some more cases of the same problem. Here are some more cases of the atrophic maxillary anterior bridge that everyone finds it so difficult. But this Malaysian uh, thinks it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Malaysia bully. Uh, uh, this is 07, uh, okay? Five years, all right. I I I don't like this Malaysia only <laughs> because sometimes it means the wrong thing. Yeah. Ask you don't mind. <laughs> actually, actually, but this is one case of Malaysia only. Yeah. This is in the right context. Huh? Okay. See, this one case is very healthy. Two zero zero eight. From canine to canine. So I put in four mini implants, put in the composite buds, and put in six teeth there. And this patient was very particular. He brought me a picture of this film star and say you must follow exactly. So I, <laughs> I had to send it to my lab and say, and then I had to try it out. You know, I even did a wax up. <coughs> And finally, this is the final result. This is another case. Four mini implants. Uh, they, I did the wax up. But this is another case. A lot of bone loss. So there was a resorption from forward backwards. So we have to put pink porcelain. <coughs> This is a final result. This is another case. Atrophic maxillary anterior ridge. Very difficult, but you know, we put some mini implants and patient walks out happily after one month, two months. Sometimes three weeks. Alright? This is another case posted on the net. A lot of bone loss. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the question was asked, what do we do now? The patient has had it for 16 years, but now there's a lot of bone loss. What do we do now? I didn't say it. I just somebody say meanings, but I didn't say. These are actually Nobel Biocare implants. 
Bronze mark. Bronze mark. Huh? Yeah, bronze mark. That's right. Not no, 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 but okay. Yeah. Bronze mark. And they didn't know anything about platform switching that time. <coughs> and during that time when they were putting it, it's accepted. Accepted in implant dentistry that every year they will accept half a mm of bone loss. It's normal, it's acceptable. Huh? So after 16 years, that's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you be do now? And uh, recently, I have a similar case in my clinic. And it's the same, brown mark. Also 16 years. Refer to me, not my case. Uh. <laughs> Refer to me. So what am I going to do? All the bone loss, and this patient is 78 years old. You tell me what I should do. What do you think? <clears throat> of course, we should remove all of them and bone graft, everything. Put back mini implants after six to eight months. Uh, no, no mini implants, regular implants. What I'm trying to say is, if we can only use regular implants, that's what you have to do. Remove the whole thing, clean it up. Either just let the patient wear a full denture for the rest of her life, or we bone graft and try to. And then one of the hardest things to do is to gain bone height with a bone graft. It's almost impossible. You have to put titanium mesh, screw it in there, and pray. <laughs> Mix autogenous bone with your artificial bone and pray. And hope. And then after that, after six months, you remove it and then put in your regular implants. Now, uh, if I, the patient I, is still alive after the trauma, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but at 78 years old, you, if you are the patient, yeah. what do you want yeah. to be done for you? Yeah. But in the future of the child, you're going to remove, disimpact the whole maxilla and put in a max, full new maxilla. <laughs> It'll come. Yeah. <laughs> that, that probably will be the next generation of yeah. dentists when we have two germ implants. Yeah, I figure out for two germ implants, we yeah. need another one or two yeah. more generations <laughs> before we can have two germ implants. Because I actually, I talked through the whole matter. I think as long as for our generation, I'm sorry, we are stuck with titanium dental implants. Two germ implants, there are a lot of issues, uh, biologic. DNA and all that, you need to have hormones to control whether two germs become a molar, how many cuts it have, and you need to have grow in the lab and plant it in there. A lot, it will cost much, much more. A lot more work. This, by all means, because I figure out that I may have to give this patient two options. One, I remove everything and I do bone ground and get from the heat and titanium mash everything and hope. The other thing is I'll uh, offer, I'll try mini implants, i tell the, this patient. Maybe put quite a few, one, put 10 or 12. Okay. Treatment planning depends on uh, three major things, the patient's budget and expectations, the patient's oral and general medical condition, the dentist's expertise and materials available. Implant dentists should be able to use both regulars and minis. I believe that we should begin to look at implant dentistry that way. We cannot be tied down to just regulars. Because minis in the past eight years has proven its work in uh, many hands around the world. And we should give the patient the best possible combination. And I want to tell you that implants are simple for the dentist and safe for the patient. You are going to cut a bridge. Between cutting a bridge and an implant, I already showed you what you think. Which is more dangerous? Which is more destructive? Which is more chances of failure is higher? So, based on that, I say, tonight, <coughs> implants are simple for the dentist and safe for the patient. Please challenge me. <laughs> and 
And I repeat, if in plant dentistry is this simple and safe, it should be taught at the undergrad level, and all general dentists should avail themselves to learn and deliver. And let me tell you, if you are a general dentist, I encourage you to walk out of this room and start putting. Start with mini implant. It's simple and safe. And you will empower yourself to help a lot of patients. And dentistry will be totally different. You'll be an exciting adventure. It should not be confined to only some specialists and a few adventurous GPs. Let's face it. How fast can we train specialists? We will never train no specialists. We will never. We need the GPs to come in to help the rest of the world. The best way to replace a missing tooth is not the bridge. It's not the denture. It's the implant. Even if you have to put in a mini implant, mini implant is still better than a bridge. Any time. No matter even if what they say about any mini implant is true, it's still better than a bridge. Safer, cheaper, easier. And let me tell you, it's less dangerous than cutting a bridge. Think about it. Think about it. It's less dangerous, less risky. <laughs> Only the rich and the brave. You need to be rich enough to pay for your implant, and you need to be brave enough to let people put the implant in your mouth. So currently only the brave and the rich and brave are <coughs> benefiting. Let us democratize implant dentistry. We all want to be democratic. Come on. Let's democratize. Let's give to all the patients the implants. Freely, possibly. And you have a whole new exciting ball game. And benefit the average and the not so brave brave that means the rest of the world. And all that this should learn to deliver in plant. That is my message tonight. And uh, I like to start a mini dental implant study club. So everyone who is interested, please contact me. And uh, I am the advisor to the Malaysian Oral Implant Association and we are the vice president there. And that definitely uh, we will be connected in, in some way. And everyone who is interested to join this study club, uh, please contact me somehow and we will try to, uh, you can have my card there. Uh, if you run out of cards, uh, my PA will give you some more. Uh, okay, any questions, please, come on. What you do is take x-rays, take a model, charge the patient for consultation. And then, in your own leisure, you study the case properly and you uh, run the problem, you call Dr. Vadaf. This is my case. <laughs> can you please tell me? Or, or somebody, you know? Uh, you can call me, alright? Uh, or discuss it at the study club. Or discuss it, or bring your case there. <laughs> okay? Because we, we want all you to learn. Because we can never train enough specialists to do the job. And it's not fair to the rest of the world. Okay? So you take the models, take x-rays, or you need ask the patient questions, medical history, etc., etc. Study the mouth, take pictures of mouth you want to, and then at the leisure time, see the patient maybe two, three weeks time, at the leisure time, study, call up your good friend, and uh, bring it to the study club. Work out the treatment plan, and the next visit, the patient sits down, explain the options, how much it costs, etc., and get him to sign informed consent. Third visit, put in the implant. I I would suggest that I I follow that protocol. The reason is because when I first started, that's why I do. <laughs> patient sits down, put in the implant, and I ran into quite a few problems after. A few of these problems and decided this is the better, safer way to do it. Yes. Even if your, your bridge, that's the way you should do it. But you cut the bridge, isn't it? You should the legs, etc. etc. Make sure the tooth is not dead, etc. You know? you know? Yeah, to check the, the articulation when you do a multiple implant or a multiple implant. The articulation. Yeah. So you got your study models, uh, 
if it is a simple case, you can articulate it quite easily. If it is a difficult case, get a wax pipe. Get a wax pipe. And then, uh, if you are not sure, get your prosthodontist friend. Call up the Mustafa or Shalim. Please, President, you are President and you, you know. <laughs> you are supposed to help us. <laughs> and then, you know, we should, we should be open and uh, forthright with our knowledge and help. Okay, because uh, in the end, everyone will be helped and the profession will be a thriving profession because we are going to have the same mental school soon. We need more work, alright? More patience. Uh, yeah, <coughs> Evidence base is important because nowadays there's a catch word. Uh, but there are very very often in uh, medicine and probably <coughs> even dentistry, we wait for all the evidence to come and show itself the patient will have died or suffered already. That's why very often uh, even the FDA fast track certain things in order to save certain urgent cases. Now everyone know who is Carl Mitch, right? Yeah. Alright? You read contemporary plant dentistry. You must buy the book, it's an excellent book, okay? Uh, but you have to spend a lot of time reading through because every paragraph you have to check out the dictionary to make sure you understand, okay? But it, it's a worthwhile exercise. Carl Mitch, so he talked about narrow diameter implants are the absolute indications 
on trying. So again. if you go to this uh, particular discussion, you find that uh, there's a lot of discussion on the basis by which we can use meaning or narrow diameter implants. Narrow diameter implants is only another word for meaning that we the other word is reduce diameter implant. Mm -hmm. The other word is minimize diameter implant. Anything below 3 mm diameter is called in the divine opinion of the FDA in America is considered a mini implant. Anything below 3 mm diameter. I don't know where they got that, but that's their divine ordination. Alright? So uh, over here, how means has some problems with narrow dental implants and then there's some discussion and you read through it, you get a thorough discussion of whether it is strong enough, whether there's enough bone implant contact area, whether you also integrate, what are the studies involved and uh, it's a thorough, even Dr. Kuei put in something that is it. What do you say? Uh? Doctor A, I have crossed over the 500s and still counting. What is 500? 500 implants. Started in 2000 and the implants are functionally impressive with PFM crowns perforating in use and the minis or reduced diameter either single bridges D1, D4 bone have yet to experience a fracture implant in use. Did fracture a few in the early years. Go ahead, you'll be surprised what the minis can do. This posted in 2009. Uh, this is me, la, okay, this is Malaysia. Uh, we got some Malaysian. So I gave a thorough discussion about why it is strong enough, why there is osseo integration, why there is surface area, and this is, if what I say is not true, I'm open. This is an international forum. They're going to whack me very hard. Uh, but 